I'm Lindsay Smith with RealAgriculture.com. I'm joined today by Jason DeVoe. He's a spreader specialist, nozzleist, otherwise, you know, technology-loving guy. Uh, we're here at SWAC 15. We're talking uh, really cool sprayer tools and toys. Too much to fit into a couple minutes, but tell me maybe the top two things that farmers could be using as soon as the spray season starts. Well, uh, there were a lot of things I talked about, but I think the two I'll point out are the most attainable, i.e. not very expensive, more bang for your buck. Number one, and truly my favorite toy is probably something you've heard about for years, but haven't tried, and that's water and oil sensitive paper. 50 bucks gets you 50 pieces, and really one of two things is going to happen. You're going to set it out, you're going to spray, and you're either going to sleep very soundly that night, or you're never going to sleep again. The problem with water sensitive paper is that it can be easily fooled, but if you take your time, get a closed, pin, a closed pin and a flag, set it in your field and spray, you get a very good immediate picture of what good job you're doing or bad job you're doing. More importantly, when guys like me come up and say, drop your boom, slow down, raise your water volume, you can do a before and after and see if it really is helping you for your situation. I've even used it pinned to sprayers to show where contamination points are and downwind to show drift incidents. Uh, if you haven't tried it, you should go out and buy some, keep it in the cab of your sprayer and use it. The second thing I'll point out will be Let's go with the nozzle calibration systems. Guys like me come along and say, go grab mom's juice jug and a timer and stand behind your sprayer one minute every nozzle to make sure it's doing what you think it's doing, not what you hope it's doing. And I've done it. And uh, let's just say I stink at reading menisci, the plural of meniscuses. Why do that? Another option, fill for a minute and weigh it. One milliliter of water, clean water, weighs one gram. Have you ever seen clean water come out of a sprayer no matter how hard you try? Both are horrible ways to do this. But the nice people at Inequist came up with what's called the Spot On and it's a vessel with two, well let's call them sensors inside. You stick it under the spraying nozzle and eight seconds later it tells you exactly how many gallons per minute or liters per minute or ounces per minute, your choice, it's emitting. One in each hand, you can run a 120 foot boom in no time at all. And you don't have to read a meniscus or weigh anything or go clean out your orange juice jug later and hope she doesn't find out. Um, there are other companies that also create similar systems. Agritronics has a larger unit. Uh, it has the beauty of more and more readings making it arguably more accurate, uh, but it allows you to plug it in later and record all the outputs. It's up to you if you want something cheaper that'll give you feedback and you dump it out or something that's going to keep a spray record. But neither of them will break the bank and between water sensitive paper and these auto calibration systems, they're going to pay dividends by helping you keep all your spray on target. Now, there were of course several other sort of new up and coming technologies oh, yeah. that maybe we don't have a ton of research on yet, but they're in, they're in the queue, uh, but they do sort of focus on air. So what's, what's coming up? What can farmers watch for? Okay, well, this is where I have to admit my pedigree. I come from a horticultural background, which means mostly what I deal with is air blast sprayers. Uh, and in my line of work, the nozzle and the pressure make the droplets, and then air takes them where they need to go. And it's always been bothersome to me that we have these field sprayers that don't have any kind of air assist system. So when you're shooting along through the field, you get something called apparent wind speed. That's the travel, uh, the velocity of the sprayer, sometimes meeting head-on with an incoming wind. You add those two numbers up and you end up with a lot of shear on that nozzle and that creates vortices and suction and basically a lot of your spray trails behind the sprayer instead of going into the crop. Some of the solutions that we talked about uh, at SWAC 15 were um, uh, pattern brushes that sort of impede the air and allow the spray to go where it needs to go. There's the wings sprayer from Europe, which physically opens the canopy and blocks air, allowing the spray to go in. Both very cool, but it still bothers me that we don't have more sprayers that have air assist, and they exist. Uh, there's a company called AirTech in Florida that will happily ship them up. I've seen them in Ontario, 120 foot air assist booms with uh, none of those canvas bags that people don't like because occasionally they get crimped or caught or they're just hard to clean. Uh, and Hardy, uh, they have a number of tow behind systems where that option is viable, available, and even I've done the research to demonstrate on the shoulders of giants who have already done it before me that air assist works. Every drop that doesn't blow behind your sprayer goes where you want it to go. So it's win-win. And I'd like to see more air assist on field sprayers. But you need to ask before they become available. 
All right. Thank you so much, Jason. We'll be following up outside in the field. Maybe we can take a look at some of these. Thanks, Lindsay.